and welcome to yet another video review for the Wind in the Willows series. Uh, this week, uh, a bit of a, uh, not an odd one, but um, one that doesn't really fit into the season of summer, uh, the very first episode, The Further Adventures of Toad. Uh, this one, of course, um, followed straight on off the back of the uh, feature film, uh, and um, it, the TV Times advertised it, uh, The Wind in the Willows got the front cover of the TV Times. Um, advertising this brand new series um, launched in April uh, 1984 so this was the one that uh, introduced this with this marvelous series and um, as the title uh, suggests it, it does cover events that were in the original book uh, that were omitted from the film um, uh, much like two other episodes in, in series one as well um, so let's get straight into it let's play right now here we go. So, The Further Adventures of Toad. So this one, um, directed by Jackie Cockle. Uh, we've got Barry Purvis animating on it, um, uh, doing Toad brilliantly uh, with Suki. Um, and uh, the most significant scene in this really is the scene on the barge with the barge woman, uh, with Toad still dressed as the washerwoman. Woman. So we all remember that uh, from the film. And. Um, I remember uh, seeing the opening titles to the Oh Mr. Toad series, um, particularly A Tale of Two Toads, I remember getting that video. And in that opening, if you remember, it's got all those clips from previous episodes. So I'd seen that before I'd seen this one. And I remember seeing the clips of Toad as the washerwoman in that, thinking, well, where's that from? Was that, that a deleted scene from the film or something? And it wasn't for a long time uh, until I finally saw this this episode when Channel 5 repeated them in the late 90s. Um, and I actually missed the first time it was shown and thankfully they repeated them again which is when I caught it for the first time. And it all started to make sense. There are these scenes of Toad as the washerwoman when he's looking back. Now just quickly before we get into it I mentioned this isn't set in any particular time of year although I guess you could sort of work it out by reading the book. Um, for me it feels right to put it in summer, also there's no, <laughs> not really any other place I would, could have put it. But I don't know if you notice there, the very first shot there in the, um, the image in the Edwardian album looked a bit wintry, it looked a bit snowy. Um, so it could be winter it could be any time really, um, but it's not really significant. So the significance of this episode, like I say, is Toad and the others reflecting on events from the film. So here we actually see, uh, I mean, every every series does this, doesn't they? They always have an episode that reflects, looks back. It's a way of saving some money. <laughs> um, the way of kind of yeah, reusing, it's basically reusing footage. So we recognise all this from the film. Uh, but I mean, this is the first episode of the series. Um, so in many ways, to be perfectly honest, it's not one of my favourites um, of the whole series. I think it's got some wonderful moments in it, and particularly that scene with the barge woman that's coming up to uh, But, yeah, it's, it's not one of my favourites because it is one that's basically reflecting the looking back mostly. Um, it feels a bit repetitious. Um, but it's, it's, it's great that it's there. I mean, Rosemary Ann Sisson adapted this, of course, um, with a few others from series one. And um, yeah, she, I mean, this one is so true to the book in terms of events that took place between that point where Toad jumps off the train and he's got to get home. Now in the film version, uh, it feels as if Toad Hall and the riverbank are very close to where that railway, uh, where he hops off the train. Um, there's just like literally a few shots between those scenes. Uh, so when we get to the scenes, it's showing Toad as the washerwoman, you can kind of fill in the blanks with really. it. It's almost as if it's taken a few days to get back to Toad, which of course in reality in the book, that is the case. I like this, so this is a reprise of a, when the Toad came home. And in the background, you've got this, sort of, this trumpet. Or what, is it like a trombone? And we see, we hear that blast kind of elsewhere in the series on its own. I love that it's put to the lyrics of when the toad came. <laughs> I look at the detail, all the food and drink there on the table. Thank you, thank you, 
And this is, of course, the first of many times where we see the, the characters in their the best dinner outfits. Not such a mole, but ratty and toad, that's their dinner outfit, and then Patrick's the got his smoking jacket. With a graceful little note. <laughs> Very well composed, I think you'll agree. Quite right, toad. Well done. I'm glad to see you showing... And it's nice, it is a nice way of connecting the film yes, to the series, you know. There was that short gap, not really long gap, between when the film was shown in December 1983 and when this was shown in April 1984. So a very short gap, and a lot of viewers would, of course, have remembered the film. It would have been, a, you know, it was a big Christmas treat in 1983. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a great way of entering into the series. Of course, we remember this from the film. Now, as you probably noticed, I haven't got a complete script for this one, but I have got some script uh, revisions that I was able to um, acquire from Rosemary System, um, which is interesting to read. Um, when his case came to court, he caused such a difficulty for the magistrate. And of course, we've got the only difficulty in this thing here. So a lot of this so far is basically is hard to make it sufficiently um, apart from, of course, those scenes back at Table. Um, uh, whom we see carving in the dock before us. And, and of course, we've got Ian Carmichael narrating the all the way through, which is quite nice. But again, it's got a storybook feel. Very typical of um, so Rosemary and Sisson's so episodes. It's just... in the dock while Mrs. Carrington Moss made her closing address to the court. So, uh... But the constables themselves, <laughs> and even the owners of the stolen motor car, <laughs> and it's almost like from the third person point of view, isn't it? You know, we're, we're understanding events from, from somebody from the outside looking in or my own kind of and again the mind of this of that is that you want to die. And of course for the theft. Pops and costumes that exist still on the screen for this film. Putting one or two up, but I've kind of done this before for the film, of course. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I basically laugh at fat face. That reference to fat face all the time. In fact, that she keeps saying. <laughs> Another year for being green. Green, yeah. Twenty. Yeah, <laughs> being green. I love that pose. It's over his hands. Like, uh, he oh, he's in chains. Mm. Mm. And of course, mm. we've got the tone. You do feel for him there. Really? Oh, I, I, incidentally, I used that dialogue for a little tribute I did to. Um, all the actors, and when, when Peter Salis passed away not too long ago, um, they all passed away in that order, strangely. The Toad is saying, oh, Badger, Ratty, Moly. And of course, the first Ratty, young Carmichael, passed away after Michael Horden, who played Badger. Richard Pearson passed away after Ian Carmichael, and then Peter Salis passed away um, fairly recently. So David Jason's in, I'm like, And of course, we have Una Stubbs here as the jailer's daughter. So with us, of course. Take it away. I brought you something <laughs> I've made myself. It's bubble and squeak. Bubble. And I love that Barry uh, Perlis, you know, the, the original Toad, you know, he, he of course animated Toad in these scenes. Um, I don't know if he did the Jello's Daughter as well, but he would have animated Toad in these scenes as well. So it's just nice that he's kind of doing that whole perspective the whole connecting the series to the film. Um, along with, like I say, Sue Kyu, who I work with as well. Um, lovely people and extremely talented. Um, Superb in their craft. <laughs> Look at that pose. I mean, that is Barry Purvis. Um, that is his best. They're doing a perfect pose for Toe. Perfectly balanced. The weight is right. The silhouette's strong. And it's held. It's clear. And the acting continues. So I had the brilliant idea of disguising myself as a washerwoman woman and simply strolled <laughs> out of the jail. Night, Maud. I love this scene. And good night, old chap. He calls him old chap. This, this long pause. Before you realize. Old chap. 
Information on the feather as well, if you notice that in the washerwoman's outfit. The way that kind of bit of follow through applied. So we're totally we haven't heard the heart of it. Almost it's almost saying to us the audience, you haven't seen the heart of it. There's more to come. So that, that brings us to the end of the footage we've seen before. And all we almost there, like we we almost don't see any more. But thanks to Mole, he's like, oh, this is exciting. We're going to it. So Toad gets his blessing from Badger and Ratty to continue. And here we go into brand new footage that could have been in the film but wasn't. Um, and it, it feels just like we're, we're in the film. It's wonderful. Uh, and like I say, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, here we go, this all makes sense now, those little clips I've seen, this is the episode it's going for. And here we have a familiar set uh, from other episodes, the canal, the bridge there, beautiful barge, uh, I can't remember who it was made by, but there was apparently a particular specific person that came in, and that was their craft, and barge using boats and things, and they so, so I'm told, they... they everything they put into it, you know, was so cared about all the detail, getting it absolutely right. And when it was completed, they had no interest at all. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 not, it's almost like that mentality of moving on to something else once you complete it. Um, and the barge woman uh, still exists. Uh, as many of you hopefully know by now, the puppets, or many of the puppets were found uh, recently and uh, donated to the other fellow. And she was among them. She was the only human character among them. I mean, some of the other humans survived as well and still exist today, including uh, one of the policemen, the fat faced policeman, <laughs> and uh, Reggie. But she is very good, Nick, and it's wonderful to, to see her, so, so I'll put a picture of her up. Um, oh, I don't know what happened to the bar. Um, Have you got any onions? No, no, do try and deprive me of the The music there, we've got, uh, that's called Snakes and Ladders. I always associate it with the youngster. But this is the first time we hear it. So we should talk about some beautiful animation here of, of Toad. He's so disgusted by the idea of doing, of doing this barge woman's washing. He's obviously posing as this washwoman. It doesn't make me that you know, she can't see him, he's a toad. <laughs> but there you go. It's just part of the charm of the whole thing. I like that slope. Soaks up his little fingers. Got a beautiful horse there, which we've never seen before. Uh, I guess would have been reused for other scenes. So, passing your time there, Toe's got all this. My paws! <laughs> oh, they're ruined! <laughs> so, we've got all these wonderful poses of Toe's. Oh, kind of he's, so <laughs> he's getting quite irritated you now. He's never quite... washed as much as a dishcloth in all your <laughs> life, I dare say. Certainly not, you low common fat barge woman. So, we've got the word fat Wash again. Woman, indeed. <laughs> I'm a toad, a very well known, respected. So here we have to lift his hat off and you can see the toe. But that continues for the whole series, isn't it? With the wings was there in disguise and no one knows it's then. Look at that shot, that's lovely. <laughs> Now, even if you didn't know it, you can tell this is an extremely early episode just by the look of Toad. You know, he's very pale green, which is similar to the film. And as the series went on, you could get yellow. Um, Barry revealed recently online that um, the skins were constantly replaced. And the Toad that showed up recently um, in that collection, uh, and I pointed out online actually, he was uh, much 
closer to this kind of sort of paler green, a bit of yellow, quite a bit of yellow in there, but it's nowhere near as yellow as those late episodes. Uh, certainly, if you think of the tail of two tiles, two is five. Um, so he was reskinned specifically for that exhibition in Liverpool those years ago, which I would love to have gone to, but I never did. Uh, animation world, it was called. Um, and uh, yeah, it was reskinned for that. So here we go into another scene that's from the book uh, Toad's Encounter with a Gypsy. And uh, it's lovely to see it, it's lovely to see it animated, brought to life. He's still on his way home from prison on the railway and all that business to so cool. So you could assume this is the same day. This is quite a nice puppet. A shilling a leg? I love this guy. <laughs> so the humour is gradually, it's kind of, it's, it was set up in the film, but you've got this lovely humour running through, and in their own the ancestor strip, which is great. But that kind of thing, that, that's only, uh, that delay with that, unfortunately, it's <laughs> counting the legs of the horse. <laughs> I love this animation as well, I've been kind of wiping his face for that, lovely. <laughs> So, Toad boasting, thinking, oh, he'd be great, he'd be very clever here, and then of course the others are just great. Which we are, the audience, we think this is all good. Yeah, he sold the horse that he stole. And the body language there, very well observed. The fact that he's kind of turned away from his friends, that he's embarrassed. Deep down, I think Toad knows that he's in the wrong, he doesn't want to admit it. Uh, so when the others are right, he, um, like a child, he kind of turns away, he sulks, he gets a bit um, you know, intimidated by them. And now he's very angry with them because they're telling him what to do, and he's kind of, oh, give him an, uh, uh, an apology after what she said to him. Said to him, throwing them off a little bit. It doesn't make any difference. You still can't steal a horse and sell it. So <laughs> it just shots like that, of like a sideways view, and the eye looking back. <laughs> and the complete miserable face, the cheeks all the way down. Like that. <laughs> and this is true of the book, I think. Uh, I mean, I haven't read it in quite some time, but I think that he did dispatch a gift of money. Um, it's all oh, those that helped him, which is the right How thing to do, and, and the moral's there, there is very important. But here we I see, what's lovely about this episode is we see very many facets, very many angles to Toad's personality. So here we, we see Toad at his worst, the selfish Toad, the conceited Toad, very horrible creature he's being at the moment. And you wonder why the other's friends with him. In that case, we shall leave at once. And never inflict our company upon you. So Padre's absolutely right, showing the authority there, and he's leaving, time. that's it. And as usual, this yes, is always set up this way, Badger takes the lead with something like this, Ratty always agrees and follows. Mole does agree, but slightly reluctantly, so he's, he feels bad, because I think he, more than any of them, knows that deep down Toad isn't really a wicked creature, he doesn't mean to be. And already Toad is feeling sorry, lovely pull focus there. Really nice. Shot of a hand to the door. Beautifully directed this one. We've got the sad new music to match as well. We've got tears. And part of us, I must admit, part of me thinks, what is this token on act? Is he kind of doing this to just get his friends back? So that he can be his wicked self again. But I don't, I think... That's genuine. Despite this, despite that quick shift into comedy, isn't it? But despite going back into this, this, yeah, this kind of back to how he was, showing off and everything, I think that deep down he is a very good character. And um, we all know that, really. Otherwise, why would the others be friends with him? Brian Costco said that in an in in interview once. It's because he's got this childlike quality so Ratty, that Ladder, David Jason brought to his voice. Beautifully reflected, of course, in the animation. And that's why you can forgive somebody like that. 
because we forgive children, don't we? We deep down we know they're not responsible for their actions, as Brian Crossfield said. So yeah, a great, great way of introducing the series. Um, a little bit of character development with the others as well, mostly with Toad. And of course, as the series goes on, we get episodes, you know, centered around other other characters. It's not long before we get one centered around more. Goes to Mole and that of course is episode three. You could say that Great Steamer is more of a ratty episode, and that was episode four. Buried Treasure followed not long after that, and that's a battle episode. So it, it was very, very well designed the series in terms of character balance, you know. Um, so yeah, so that that's the way it all began. Um, April 1984, I mean, gosh. So yeah, I had to stick that one somewhere because <laughs> As you can see, not any particular season. It felt right here, uh, particularly the weather we've had here in England. It, it was beautiful last week, but this weekend it's not great at all, depending where you are, of course, but I think generally it's not typical summer weather. We've got a lot of rain, quite miserable. So hopefully things will brighten up uh, next week for uh, the Grand Annual Show. That's the next one. Uh, and that's heading in, into August, of course, uh, late summer, so the last summer month. Uh, and we've got four more episodes of course of summer and then we get into autumn. I can't believe we're heading into late summer already. It's kind of, where's the summer going? Gosh, we're going to hang on to it. I hope we're going to get a lot of good weather in all. So thank you for watching, as always. Um, I'm sorry if I haven't applied, replied rather to all your comments yet. Uh, I was on holiday last week in, uh, in Buckman's in Minehead. If you haven't been there before, that's such a wonderful place. And thankfully we were very lucky that it was extremely hot. <laughs> Um, so yeah, next week, the Grand Annual Show, uh, again, that's from Series 1 as well, uh, bit of a classic that one, because it's from the Summer Escapades video, so I'm sure many of you remember that one more than uh, a lot of the others. Uh, so, I'll get going, so thanks again, keep the comments coming, and I will reply, I promise I'll try and get around to them this weekend, uh, and I shall see you soon. All the best, and enjoy the weather. <laughs> Cheers then. <laughs>